Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And well, if you look very closely behind me up there to the historical Brooklyn's motor circuit, um, this was built 115 years ago, 1907, and was a 2.7 or so mile motor circuit until I think 1939 when it closed just before the start or just during the start really of the Second World War. But it's a truly magical place actually and one that I'm super fortunate to see quite frequently because my friends at Brooklyn's Cars Limited just up the hill behind me there have this gorgeous 996 Porsche 911 Carrera 4 for sale which Charlie has very kindly invited me to come and drive this afternoon. Now when I got the message from Charlie to come and drive this car it actually works really nicely because my last video and if you haven't seen it click on the top right hand side of the screen over there was with a Maserati Gran Turismo one of those sort of older cars noughties cars let's say that's around that £20,000 price point behind me lo and behold a 996 911 also generally fits that sort of price point this one being slightly higher mileage maybe closer to 15,000. We'll get into it a little bit more, this car specifically in a minute, but it's perfect because this is exactly the same sort of thing as that Gran Turismo, which did leave me feeling a little bit disappointed, but you'll have to go and watch that video if you want to know more as to why that is. But from a personal perspective, I'm super excited to jump in this 911 because, well, it's been about a month or so since I sold my 986 Boxster S and immediately, literally driving it 50 meters down here to set this camera up just reminded me of the way everything is positioned and the switch gear and reminded me all of my boxer that i miss ever so much actually so very excited to get this out on the road give it a good old spin and yeah find out if this is something that you should be buying i can't see these cars certainly going any lower in price i can probably see them going up if anything so let's find out if it is worth the money and of course if you're interested in this particular car which I think it's in a gorgeous color actually it is for sale here at brooklyn's cars limited you have to be very quick charlie reckons this will go pretty much instantaneously links below all right so here we go 996 Carrera 4. Now I've driven a 996 Carrera 2 a few years ago actually, which funnily enough belonged to Charlie, who is the one selling this car. Uh, but what we have to play with here is, well, a Y-Reg car. So it's 2001, 21 years old. And these ran from around the very, very late 90s to mid 2000s before the 997 was introduced. But 315 horsepower, around 280 pounds for of torque six speed manual gearbox in this you could also get the tiptronic which is less desirable for obvious reasons and a top speed of around 177 miles per hour which is quite impressive really considering well it's a 2001 car and it's got four seats unlike the maserati gran turismo which at the time of filming this i actually drove yesterday you couldn't get two adults in the back there that gran turismo was a true four seater but as a trade-off, this thing feels much, much smaller and racier, actually, believe it or not. Now, immediate, immediate impressions once stepping into this Porsche. Bear in mind, this is a 2001 car. Yesterday's Gran Turismo was a 2008 example. This has 123,000 miles on the clock. That Gran Turismo was just under 90. Immediate impressions, the build quality and the condition of the interior and all the materials is night and day this porsche believe it or not is far superior even given it's seven years lengthier in age and forty thousand or so miles leggier than that maserati the build quality in here is second to none it's not really a secret with porsche they are unbelievably well built cars and it feels very well put together and certainly not its age at all. Also from just driving this down the road for two minutes, and this is the same in the 911 GT3 Touring that I drove last week, the brand new example, it immediately, it sounds like a cliche, but it immediately makes sense. Everything is in the right place, even from the position of the steering wheel and then its correlation 
to the gear lever, it's all extremely purposeful and as you would expect. The visibility is incredible out the back, even better than most cars because you've got that big sloped rear windscreen, big windows at the sides, lovely sloped front windscreen, and then just the view over those hunched arches, basically the same view as my Boxster was because it's essentially the same car at the front. The main difference at the front between this and my former Boxster is the boot capacity on this is far, far less, but you do have four seats and some extra storage behind. And right now we're doing 35 miles an hour in sixth gear, pottering along, ticking over just over a thousand RPM and this thing is extremely civilized. Now if I just do a rev match down into second, three and a half thousand RPM. Oh, wow. Oh wow, that engine. Wow, this is a 3.4 with 315 horsepower and that Boxster was a 3.2 with around 260 horsepower. This, I have to say, feels a lot quicker. It feels a lot quicker and the engine feels smoother. You do have to take everything when reviewing these older cars with a pinch of salt because obviously with 21 years between the day it rolled out the factory and now, a lot can be said for how it's been looked after, how it's been driven, the exact condition of these cars all vary so much. So for example, my Boxster could have been a not very good example and this could be a fantastic example or vice versa. But that engine just feels gorgeous. What we'll do is we'll take a right here onto the A3 so that we can take it up to 70 miles an hour and just go through those gears a little bit more because I want to feel that performance at the top end because that up to around 5,000 RPM was just gorgeous. So price point wise, similarly to the Gran Turismo yesterday, or the last video you guys watched, you can get these from around or even under 15,000 pounds. And you can pay as much as 30,000 pounds for a really nice one. Hang on, hold that thought. 40 miles an hour, let's go second gear. And that's nicely 70 miles an hour right at the top there, just above 7,000 RPM. And that is a lovely engine. That is honestly much nicer than my Boxster was. Just in the way that it sounds, the way that it picks up, and just that mid-range is just so velvety and gracious is how I want to describe it. It feels like a bigger brother. It really does. It feels like a more complete package to the Boxster and can I just say immediately so I drove that Maserati yesterday and it didn't really ever put a smile on my face immediately being in this I'm inside at least grinning from ear to ear and I want to buy it so for me already if it was between this and the Gran Turismo 100 million thousand percent is. Just listen to that. I could shift gears in this thing all day long. It's just so... Let's just stop here a second. There's no one behind me. Just... Oh. That is the most satisfying feeling and sound on the planet. Name a better one. Gated metal manual maybe, but that is gorgeous. Definitely the theme word of today, gorgeous. Just note on the design of these cars as well. So interior, look, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, obviously it's dated in here, but for what it is, that's what you want. That Gran Turismo, although it is a newer car, it did have an infotainment screen in it, but unfortunately that just ruined it because it really, really showed up its age, whereas there's nothing really digital in here. Everything is still analog, and therefore, it almost doesn't look as old as that Gran Turismo. Obviously, we've just got the beautiful five Porsche dials in front of us, a huge rev counter, speedo on the left, 
got our water temperature and fuel gauge, oil pressure and battery voltage on the left. Everything you're going to possibly need to drive the car is right in front of you. Okay, we found ourselves on a few twisties, so let's drop this down a few gears. Oh, what a sound. Let's see how this thing handles. try and find some negative things to say about the car then because at the moment I'm really having to think about it there's no cup holders in here that's the first thing that springs to mind unless I'm being stupid I cannot see any cup holders I believe some of these were optioned with such a contraption but unfortunately in this one not the case it is a little bit bumpy around town it's perfectly easy and, and, and nice to drive Steering's quite heavy, so I can imagine some tight manoeuvring would, you know, be a little bit more strenuous than something more modern, but it's actually perfectly fine. Just a little bit, if you feel here, just a bit bumpy on the old suspension, perhaps. But the fact that this car is 21 years old and there's no rattles coming from, well, the engine or the car itself, the only little rattles I can hear is from my camera equipment that I put in the car. It's really, really quite impressive. It really is. I mean, there's a reason these machines are priced the way they are because the care and the love that goes into building these is remarkable. One thing to be said is that these things are pretty common, which might be seen as a negative thing if you want something rarer, which would be one pull for that Maserati. But it means there's some great owners clubs around, some fantastic information and experience to be had from the forums. And also, from my experience with owning a Boxster, some great Porsche specialists to take your car to for work, namely E-Porsche and La Rose Porsche. So these are very, very much approachable machines. It's approachable in the way that you can get in and drive it fast and it doesn't feel too scary. It's approachable in the sense that it's a very, very doable price point for most people. So then, before I get too carried away, I'm going to head back to Brooklyn's now and hand back the keys to Charlie. Um, really, really eye-opening this one. I wasn't expecting to love the 996 as much as I did, and I, I, I didn't expect it to be quite as night and day from my Boxster as it has been. I'm not saying it's better than the Boxster, but I think it's a more complete package. And just the engine in this, and the way it all feels and is put together does just feel a little bit more attractive to me than a Boxster. You're paying more for it though, of course. But anyway, I'm getting carried away. I'm gonna hand the keys back to Charlie, sadly, and say thank you very much to him for uh, allowing me to use the car this afternoon and open up the floor to you guys in terms of whether you think I'm going completely bonkers or if you've had similar experiences with these cars. I know there's a lot of 996 owners watching this video, so do comment below on, on what your thoughts are. But also, as with the last video and the Maserati, which you can watch up here, do let me know where you would put your money. Would you buy one of these? Would you buy a Gran Turismo? Would you buy an Aston Martin V8 Vantage? I'd love to know, and I'd love to drive all these cars as well. So if you do have anything of interest that you think I might like to review, do get in touch with my email on the screen. Thanks so much for watching. If you're one of my 70% of viewers that are not subscribed, do me a huge favour, hit that big red button, subscribe to this channel, and help me out to make more videos right now. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very, very 
very, very soon. Whee! <laughs> oh my goodness. That, that is something else.